Okay, welcome everybody. It's 1130 Eastern, so we'll go ahead and get started with our next session. I'm Wilma Hodges. I'll be moderating the session uh, today, and I have the honor of introducing Josh, who apparently needs no introduction, according to Martin, so I'm not going to read the whole thing, but Josh Wilson is the VP and Chief Oper Operating Officer at Longsite, and he's also one of our newly minted Aperio Fellows, so congrats to him on that. Um, and he's going to be talking through the Sakai Roadmap post-COVID edition. So um, take it away, Josh. All right. Hi, all. Um, thanks for spending a little time this afternoon or late this morning, almost this afternoon. Um, so I wanted to, my plan for this session was to give you an update on where we were with the roadmap. This is what I did last year. Um, and it worked out pretty well because we were able to say we've gotten this far, this, this, this stuff is done, this stuff is yet to be done. Here's where we're on track and here's where we're not. Uh, the challenge this year is that, uh, you know, all of our assumptions have been upended by COVID-19. So I wanna share with you a little bit about where we're at and get your feedback about where we're going from here. But before I do that, let me give you a bit of the lay of the land, give you a sense of how we got to where we are and what the challenges are that we're facing before we turn to the roadmap itself. I'll try and keep that part of it quick because I know people really wanna see the roadmap. So let's, uh, let's, let's get down to it, shall we? All right, so the, it's important to remember why it is that we have a roadmap in the first place. So we, this is the second roadmap that we've done. Last year was a three-year roadmap from 2020 to 2023, and uh, uh, 2020 to 2022, excuse me, three years worth. And this year, we're, we moved it forward one year, 2021 through 2023. So the idea is to try and promote a vision of ourselves of Sakai as forward-looking, energetic, and continuously improving. Uh, we want to convey how Sakai is going to evolve to better meet the needs of faculty and students. And we also found that we needed this shared agreement about the sequence in which enhancements will be implemented. Uh, prior to the existence of the roadmap, there were a lot of situations in which we planned to do a bunch of things, but every time there was a break in the action, we had to relitigate all the things that we had planned to do. Do we want to do this? Do we want to do that? Do we want to change the order? There was a lot of effort that was put into that relitigation and rethinking and the availability of a roadmap uh, helps us all know what we're doing next without needing to rethink or, or rediscuss. There's a lot of effort that's saved. And initially with the roadmap, I wanted to encourage multi-year funding strategies. So there are institutions that support work in Sakai and we're really, really grateful to those institutions that, that sponsor improvements. And I wanted to help them get on board in advance with, with improvements that they knew were gonna be coming. And some of that has happened. I think uh, we've used the roadmap in some ways more effectively for organizing our community expenditures and uh, most importantly, our community expenditure of time. One of the things that I've discovered through this is that while money is a factor, Developer time is possibly even a more important limiting factor. So how do we husband, how do we steward uh, that particular resource, which is really scarce? So the roadmap is good for all of those things. Whoop. All right, don't want to get to the pandemic yet. Don't want to, uh, you know, steal my own thunder. So how do we get to where we are right now? So uh, back in the fall, there was a roadmap draft in October. There was input from a steering team. There are eight or 10 folks who were nice enough to offer a fair bit of iterative feedback on versions of the roadmap. So I really should name them and I will I'll get their names out and put them in the chat at the, at the end of the session. I'm really, really grateful to those folks and some of those folks are in the room right now. So they gave some early input. And then in November, I presented the roadmap at the Sakai Virtual Conference for feedback. I brought it to a bunch of Sakai Working Group meetings for feedback. We did a pile of iteration. And then in early January, there was another roadmap revision that was brought to Sakai Camp for adoption. And so it was January, we were all happy, we were traveling, there was no pandemic, we adopted a roadmap, yay. Um, but we had a problem, there was a pandemic. And uh, as you guys know, that changed everything for all of our institutions. It, uh, it made, uh, it put Longsight in a position where we were really focused on trying to work with institutions to deliver the capacity they needed to get all sorts of their courses online. Uh, you at, at various institutions were working on uh, transitioning faculty, helping faculty transition from uh, on-ground courses to online courses in no time at all. 
So it really changed everything. And it also meant that we had a couple of challenges. So some of these challenges were pre-existing and the pandemic exposed them. And one of them, uh, and some of them were not pre-existing, but the pandemic created them. So let's take a look. I think there are three such challenges. So the first on the left here, we released Sakai later than we had planned, Sakai 20. So we had planned for a Q1 release uh, last year and the year before that, we released in late March and that was the plan, except we had a pandemic and that didn't really work. So we didn't really release until the end of April, very beginning of May. So we were a month behind at the start. Um, the other thing that happened was that because of the pandemic and because people had they were working from home and their kids were at home and their institutions were transitioning and their faculty members needed lots of help and courses had to go online. Everyone's pooped. Everyone's tired. People don't have the time that they would have normally had to uh, offer to the community to do the work that the community needs to have done. So the pandemic meant not only were we late in releasing, but we had less capacity to manage the release process and get it out the door and then less capacity to turn around and work on Sakai 21. So here's, here's a situation that was exposed for us. Uh, in, in some ways, the pandemic acts as an, an accelerant for issues that already exist and brings them to the fore, lights them on fire, if you will. So we've heard from a bunch of our institutions, especially those that host Sakai themselves in their data center, that uh, the March release uh, the late March release that had been planned is a real problem for them. So that problem only got worse because we suddenly had a late April, early May release. Um, and what we wanted to avoid was a situation in which we uh, ended up in a pattern where we would release that late in the spring every year, because that just means it's that much worse for institutions. So these, so these were the challenges. This is what we saw. Um, and it presented an opportunity in some ways. Uh, uh, Michael Green from Duke, who uh, may or may not be here, he's, he's not here in this session, but he frequently says, and this isn't his line, but he uh, deploys it well, don't never let a good crisis go to waste. And so I think in this particular case, we ought not to let this crisis go to waste. So what's our opportunity here? Our opportunity here is to change the release schedule so that it better suits the institutions that have to self-host and need to get, you need to make use of spring deployment windows. And it also does something for the community. One of the things we discovered was that we went to Sakai camp in January. Oh, those days when we went to Sakai camp. Um, I came home with this nasty bug, which may or may not have been COVID. We'll never really know because the serology tests aren't, aren't good enough yet. Um, but we came, we all came back from Sakai camp and uh, we were all excited to work on the 21 release because we put a lot of thought into what was to go into that 21 release, except we then had to put all that on hold and spend months working on the 20 release. That took all the air out of the balloon. So here's our opportunity, right? We get to do a couple of things. We get to um, switch our release calendar to a late December release. So uh, the next release happens at the end of the previous calendar year. So Suddenly, uh, when we leave Sakai Camp, we're working on the next release. All our energy is, that has been focused at Sakai Camp and built up at Sakai Camp goes to that next release. And we are able to make it better for schools that need those spring deployment windows. So this is a good thing. So we have this opportunity to set the feature freeze date in August now and release in December. So, and in between, we'll have QA and we're gonna be adding capacity to QA. So uh, one of the things that is not well known about what Dr. Chuck has done recently is uh, LongSight has been funding a QA tester, Andrea Schmidt, for a while now. And Dr. Chuck is putting up funds to uh, add another QA tester to the mix. So there'll be all the folks from uh, the various institutions in the Sakai community who contribute their time. And we'll have two people whose time is contracted to us. Because one of the things we discovered this year was that there wasn't enough QA capacity. So we have the ability to address that now. So, so we'll do QA, we'll work on bug fixes, we'll work on the release between August and December. Um, so that is, that's our opportunity and we're gonna seize that. But it means that the roadmap has to change. So let's take a look at uh, what some of those changes might be. So the changes that I'm gonna put forth now, um, they are, they've 
they are here thanks to the input from the steering team. So thank you guys, much appreciated. And uh, I really want to get your feedback on this. So the question is, uh, you know, what's working here? What's, what's on the right track? What's on the wrong track? One of the things that we've done is to cut down many of the things that we, cut down the list of things that we had planned uh, for Sakai 21 and do a smaller list of things with a bigger bang. So let's, let's talk through what is in the roadmap right now. And as Wilma has put the link to the roadmap document in the chat. So, um, so absolutely, um, um, yeah, so please, please comment in the roadmap document. Please comment in the chat, whichever be better for you. I will grab both of them and bring them all together. And we'll use uh, the comments, the combined comments to iterate on this document. And Dr. Chuck notes that uh, Mark Goldbeck was working extensively on QA and uh, that he's contributed 25K to Sakai for general support. So yes, huge thank you to Dr. Chuck for both of those. Um, Mark was, was doing a great job organizing QA, uh, but we still need more capacity, even despite all the great things that Mark is doing. So um, Mark, I, you know, I, I didn't mean to leave you out if you're here in the session. So we, we value you, you're doing great stuff, but we need, we need more we need more capacity. We need more people contributing to the work. Um, so that's that's the plan. All right. So what do, what's what's proposed in the Sakai 21 roadmap now? So uh, as before, we have new features. We have feature improvements. We have technical improvements, and we have infrastructure upgrades. One of the things that was requested in the PMC meeting this spring was to better articulate why it is we're doing the things that we suggest we're gonna do on the roadmap. So what I've done is to add a column of priorities here. So uh, our priorities, as I understand them, are better user experience, better capabilities for collaboration and discussion, better overall performance, and uh, enhanced capabilities for program assessment. So this comes out of what was in the roadmap, the thoughts from the steering team, what we talked about at Sakai Camp. So all of this is uh, you know, what I think are our uh, implicit priorities are that I'm now making explicit. So I, I welcome your feedback on those as well. So looking at the, the user experience track. So this is gonna be the big bang for Sakai 21, according to this proposal. A lot of work has been done on designing a brand new UI for Sakai, working on uh, dashboards for students and dashboards for faculty, brand new global navigation. Uh, we're gonna redo the table structure the, the, there are tables throughout Sakai. We're going to redo the, the design of those tables to make them look better and function better. And uh, also, there are tabs that appear throughout Sakai. So we're going to redo the design of those tabs to make them uh, to bring them up to speed and up to date. So, so in the user experience thread, uh, the new features will be new global nav, uh, new instructor and student dashboards, and also those other UI improvements. Um, from a feature improvement perspective. We're proposing to uh, implement Sakai Editor everywhere. So currently in Sakai 20, there is a new version of CK Editor, it's CK Editor 5, but it's only in the grader. So what we, what we propose to do is to make CK Editor 5 available in all of the tools for Sakai 21. And we're also proposing a new calendar UI. So the back end of the calendar won't change, but we've, uh, we've discovered a, uh, a new open source calendar project. If you go to uh, fullcalendar.io, um, this is a great calendar front end. It beats the heck out of the one that we've had since probably the beginning of Sakai. So EDF is going to implement this uh, on top of our existing calendar backend. So those are the user experience improvements that we're proposing as part of this, this uh, tightened roadmap. In the collaboration discussion vein, document annotation is gonna be a big part of this. So there are a bunch of different ways we might approach this. Dr. Chuck has a Sugi-based annotation tool. Uh, Hypothesis has given a, a session already and they're giving a workshop tomorrow. Uh, so they're open source, that's a possibility. So there are, all, there are other possibilities as well. Uh, thanks Wilma for posting fullcalendar.io in the chat. So document annotation is in the new features area for collaboration and discussion. Um, I, the University of Dayton at Sakai Camp uh, committed to contributing some improvements to lessons, and I'm really, really excited about those. Um, and also there are some uh, select JIRAs to improve forums that we're gonna try and get done. So uh, in the last year to year and a half, there was a group that was working on modernizing forums and they authored a bunch of JIRAs to make some, some critical uh, 
uh, improvements to forums. And so we've asked EDF to work on those. So that's the collaboration and discussion thread. Uh, in the overall performance thread, uh, automated QA testing is continue to move, con continuing to move forward. So yes, John Buckingham, uh, you know, I support SAC 25018 as well. So thank you for bringing that forward. Um, so automated QA testing is moving forward. There have been some improvements that have been made to Samago performance to better support uh, high stakes online testing. Um, and also uh, we're hoping to be able to get done the grading service that we started for Sakai 20 and didn't quite get done. This is the idea of a share of a grading service that would be the back end for all the grading in Sakai. It would take the grading logic out of the tools where it lives right now and centralize it in one place so that that would allow for uh, easier, better, faster synchronization of grades across tools and it would solve a few of the problems that we have in that area. And also from a, from a performance perspective, there are infrastructure upgrades. So Earl is hard at work on the Spring 5 upgrade and the Hibernate 5 upgrade. Those are partially done and will be completed for Sakai 21. And finally, uh, the last thread is program assessment and uh, Maris College has sponsored uh, some work on program level analytics. And so my, my fondest wish and serious intent is to get those into Sakai 21 as well. Um, so that is a quick pass at the roadmap. And now I really would like your feedback. So if you haven't yet gone to the, uh, the roadmap document, please do. Um, and please, uh, it, it's open to your comments. So please comment in this document. Um, I'm really curious to hear uh, what's on track and what could be improved. So comment in the document, comment in the session chat, and hopefully we can have a bit of a conversation about that. And if uh, um, I'm, I'm, let's see. So Wilma, maybe if, uh, if folks uh, let us know in the chat that they have a comment that they'd like to verbalize, uh, they can unmute and, and do it that way as well. So sure. let's see, let me, yeah. let's, let's, let's tackle the chat first here. Uh, so let's see, um, uh, Neil notes always more capacity needed for QA and don't you know it, Neil? I mean, you were, you know, uh, yes, for sure. And, and Mark agrees. Um, John and Sorge, I think I butcher your name every time, I'm sorry, um, likes full calendar. So that's, that is definitely in the plan. EDF has that on their list of things and they will begin that soon. Matter of fact, that's, that's more shovel ready than many of the other things on their list. So they may have already begun. Um, let's see, Tiffany writes, how can a keyboard user drag and drop these events in full calendar? I don't have a good answer to that, but we, we know that drag and drop is not sufficient on its own. I mean, you and I have had these conversations. We've been in groups to have these conversations. There needs to be an equally capable, uh, accessible option. So yes, for sure. But I don't know the answer to that. Wilma, do, do, you, do you know, or is that a Yeah, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but I do know that um, accessibility is obviously a priority. So uh, we're gonna make sure that there's another alternative way to do the same things. One of the nice things about adopting an open source project from outside, and I'm a big fan of this, you know, wherever we can, is then we can focus our efforts on uh, improving the things that only we can improve. You know, so maybe we put a, a PR into the, uh, the, the full calendar project that actually makes this kind of accessibility improvement if they don't already have it. Um, so, you know, I want to, I, I would love for us to focus on the stuff that only we can do and wherever possible adopt stuff from outside to supplement that. Um, so Tiffany notes her concern about the adoption of new stuff from outside without adequate testing. So, uh, Gradebook was a problem. You've, you have definitely made this point and I definitely agree. We do not want to repeat the accessibility issues that we introduced in Gradebook uh, in other places. So that was a lot, there are a lot of great aspects of the Gradebook story. One of the not so great aspects is that uh, there were accessibility problems that were introduced with new Gradebook, with Gradebook NG when it came in. No, we, we don't want to do that again. Um, yeah, I, I, I see you and I hear you. Thank you for that. Um, let's see. Uh, Neil notes automated QA testing, a long time dream. Let's see, is, uh, is Mark, Mark is in the room. Um, Mark, do you want to, do you want to unmute and give us a quick update on automated QA testing just for fun? Yeah, no, we're making good progress. I'm uh, Paul Severance and myself are working on it and we've chose to use Cypress and we're going to uh, use feature files. 
as well to uh, create automated QA testing. We have been making a lot of progress on it. We're actually updating the regression scripts currently to make them up to date and taking out the old stuff that was in them. And then we're gonna change them to future files. And then we're gonna use them in the Cypress to automate it. So we do have a good, and I've been talking to Earl about it too as well. He's been wow, working that's great. on it. Am, am I right in saying that uh, Paul's work is underwritten by Dr. Chuck and Learning Experiences? Yes, yep. So yet another quiet contribution that Dr. Chuck is making. I mean, he's the he's the foundation that we stand on in a lot of ways right now. So we're we're grateful. Um, speaking of Dr. Chuck, he writes, "I like the calendar. Will we be disciplined? Uh, do you by that do you mean uh, in terms of dealing with the, with the accessibility issues if they exist? No, no, I'm not. We're, I'm, I assume we're, we'll be focused on that. Um, no, I'm more concerned about we historically we've had kind of like uh, the the features for which we'll slip the schedule list, right? Um, and and I'm wondering if, and, and I, I'm, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I think we've made good decisions all along and sometimes you slip the schedule for features, but to make a December 15th release and make an August 15th code freeze really happen, we have to be disciplined and allow things. Now, one of the things that encourages me is we didn't just say what we want, which is, New lessons by August, code freeze, installable by December, but it's like, you, know, you can't do it. I mean, you can't, you can't fit 20 pounds of, 20 gallons of water in a five gallon bucket. And so, so we had the, the maturity to say that new lessons, as much as we want it, is not 21. And that, those are the kind of decisions that lead to our ability to meet that calendar. And so that, that's really my question about the calendar is, have we thought about, you know, just the discipline it's going to take to to not to just let things go to a later release? And I think we should. I think we we've reached the point where um, we can wait longer for new features. Things are things. It's not like there's a feature right now that is a competitive crisis. We're really kind of starting to pull ahead of our competitors in many ways. And when you're building features that are pulling ahead, you aren't sort of in the same panic as when you're building features that you feel are catching up. And I mean, that's my perspective, but Josh, you're closer to it. So I'm curious what you think. Yeah, I mean, I think what, what you see in this proposal, there are a bunch of things that we moved to 22. So achievements, unified messaging, instructional analytics, workflow improvements, um, uh, upgrading some of the JSF tools to JSF2, uh, the hands-on table replacements. So part of this proposal is moving some of that stuff to 22 in the interest of being able to meet this different time frame and you know, be mindful of the moment that we're in and what we're actually capable of. And I would welcome comments on that. Um, uh, let's see, Jeffrey Jones asks, what is achievements? And achievements is, a, is an idea that Earl Neitzel has put forth it is a, a kind of bigger, better badging integration. The idea is that badging is great, but there needs to be a way to link badges back to things that you have completed in Sakai. So uh, the idea would be to create an achievement service that would track all different kinds of things that you had completed in Sakai courses. Uh, some and of so which might it, lead to badges and some not. Yeah, it would be bigger than just badges. It um, would also be able to provide data that you could report on for um, institutional accreditation, for example, if you're looking at learning objectives and outcomes, that you'd be able to tag things and be able to report on that. I do think from a, from a discipline perspective, there are a couple of things in this proposal that may or may not make it. Uh, it's not clear to me that the grading service will make it. Um, uh, it was mostly done going into 20, but some of the improvements that have happened to 20 since then, bug fixes and things, means that the, the grading service has some extra work that's a, that needs to be attached to it in order to, uh, you know, properly address the changes that have happened since Earl stopped coding it in, you know, August, September. Um, so that, that might slip. Um, uh, program level analytics, I really, really, really don't want it to slip. Um, but I think, you know, given the the choice between you know new UI and program level analytics. I know what I would choose. Uh, I'm curious if uh, if you folks could comment in the either in the chat or the document if you would prioritize analytics over UI. That would be interesting feedback. In some ways, the train is a bit out of the station on the UI because Adrian is already building it. 
Um, you know, but I think if we have differences of opinion on that question, we ought to know it. So let's see. So move, moving down the chat a little bit more. Wilma, we've got five more minutes. Is that right? Yes, five minutes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Francois notes, was lessons already rewritten? So, no, there was UI work that was done. We have a UI design. Uh, we were going to do it for 21, and it's been postponed to 22. So, not yet. Um, let's see. Dave Hearn writes, uh, isn't there some progress being made with Apache Ignite? That's not a question I can answer. Is there someone here who could? All right, um, Dave, I'll, I'll make a note of that question and I'll ask Earl. I know that Earl is planning some caching work, but I, I, I don't know much more than that. Uh, let's see, so we've got a- Apache Ignite is in trunk right now, master. That's good news. I mean, I, I think he's still hooking it up to various caches, but the basic Apache Ignite is there. Got it. Okay. So that feels very 21-ish. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. That's, right. uh, that's helpful. It's already here. That's kind of, it's going to be hard for it to somehow vanish between now and 21. It, it'll just be a question of how much we use it, right? But so we decided a week and a half ago to just put it in and, uh, and then ride it. All right, other comments in the chat. Um, uh, let's see. <clears throat> There's if you're going to get pulled, you're using Ignite. So there's uh, there's support for being disciplined. There's support for time boxing. Uh, Mark makes additional comments on automating QA. Thank you for those. Um, uh, Matt says the new date is really soon. Yeah, there, there's no joke. The thing is, though, the funny, so really, there's very little work that's done on new features between mid-August and the end of September. You know, so one of the things we realized was that an October release date isn't all that different from an August, uh, freeze date, rather, isn't all that different from an August freeze date because the folks who are doing a lot of the work are focused on uh, either back to school stuff at their own institutions or uh, for long site developers, we're focused on support for institutions that are going back to school. So. Uh, Earl and Adrian will get little to no work done on the release between August and October anyway. So it just kind of made sense to set the date earlier and, and allow QA to begin because uh, Andrea Schmidt and whoever else we add to the QA team, uh, you know, they're working on the side. They will still have the time that they have to offer us to QA uh, when we're all focused on back to school. I think this is why we like trying to pick the release date was tough too because nobody, very few people would run the dot zero. So you'd, you'd, if you released in December, nobody would pick that up to the dot one, which is, uh, I don't know, it, it's the timing is tough to find. When you can release the best, the people will, will pick it up. That's always been our problem. Yeah, I mean, I think we heard a lot from Western and we heard a lot from Marist and, you know, in particular, but also others that, uh, you know, they really needed the dot o earlier so they could kick the tires earlier. It wasn't that they were going to implement it in production, but they needed it in under on their dev instances. And most of them probably wouldn't even implement it till the spring summer anyway, but they need it. Yeah, Western and those that makes sense. They need it as early as they can so they can have it ready for the spring summer, but they're not going to run it till spring summer, but yep. they need it before like when we did May, you know. So Exactly. I mean, folks like Julian Sharp made this point, you know, strongly and nicely and Sean Foster made this point strongly and nicely and it just seemed like we ought to, we ought to try to accommodate that because it was the right thing to do. So, right. uh, let's see. Um, it is 1159. There are a couple more comments in the chat. Let me just buzz through them quickly. Uh, John writes, I'm not sure what program analytics is. Uh, that's the idea that your deans and program heads can report on uh, your students and your programs uh, mapping to the outcomes that you design for those programs. It's really, uh, it's, it, Wilma talked about analytics, uh, about uh, the achievement service being a bit about uh, accreditation re related reporting, and this is a bit of that same thing. Um, Adrian writes the QA die off over, over Christmas. Yeah, so the early date is important and uh, having, having Dr. Chuck underwrite the additional staff member is also really important for that as well. Uh, let's see. Chuck writes, I encourage Earl to merge it. Oh, so he's still talking about Ignite. Okay. Um, all right. 
So that is, that's the end of the comments in chat. I will make sure to save those. Uh, there aren't all that many comments in the document. Uh, please, please, please give me your feedback. I think even if you look at it and say, this looks good to me, you know, that would be really helpful. I think, you know, getting some plus ones in the document, if we're barking up the right tree, would be a really good thing. Um, and I'm, I'm curious about the, the linkage between the priorities and the work that's being done. That's, that's kind of a new thing in the roadmap uh, in this version and wasn't in the January version. So I would love feedback on that. All right, it is, it is noon. So um, I will hand this back to Wilma so that we can get out of here. Thanks everybody for attending. And um, as, as Josh mentioned, we'd love your feedback on the document or you can you know, contact Josh if you have additional questions. And I believe we have a 10 minute break and then one more set of sessions before the lunch break. So I will um, hopefully see you in another session in about 10 minutes. Thanks Bye everyone. All. Thank you. <laughs>